Christ is the only bridegroom of the faithful church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Father Angel from the Mission of San Andrew in Tijuana, Diocese of Mexico of the Orthodox Church in America. Welcome to the Gospel for April the 25th, 2020, according to St. John. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them at baptized. John also was baptizing at Enon near Salem, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and the Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase and I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies that he, what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. Glory be to thee, O God, glory be to thee. No man can take anything that is not given. And that is why it really surprises me, shocks me, to hear some priests that say that they have the power, the authority, to consecrate the holy body of the Lord, to forgive business uh, uh, sins, they by themselves, with the power, they have the power, that's what they say, like they have the Holy Spirit. I would love to, tell, to ask them, show me the Holy Spirit if you have Him, or it, and they might show me a dove or some, something. They are weak. They are um, twisted in their mind and in their faithfulness. They forget that every good gift is from above. And we as priests are only the channels who by the mercy of God, when we are together with the vine as branches, God will make the fruits, His fruits, not our fruits. But what I'd like to, to point out today is this. Christ is the only bridegroom. Again, it is wrong to say that we priests are the bridegrooms or even the spouses, the husbands of, of the church. That, that's absolutely nonsense. As much that we could be, we could be as much as, as a friend of the bridegroom. And who is the bridegroom? It's you, the church. And if we come back to ourselves, we are not above the church. We are part of the church. We are co-servants with you, who, is, who are laity. We are co-servants. We have been singled out to carry upon our shoulders the ministering to you, to serve God through you. But we are not above you. We are in the same level as you are. So we all, and we also as clergy, should be striving to get united with our bridegroom, with our Christ. If you really want to be saved, you need to obey Him. You need to, to remain faithful to Him. For in what place could it be that you would be thinking about being married, knowing beforehand that he or she whom you are going to marry is going to defile your marriage immediately by sleeping with hundreds of different men or women? Would you still be interested in that? If you're not really wanting to create a family, you wouldn't care. You would uh, defile yourself as just as a dog or something like that that smells and likes to jump on a woman or a man or whatever, and then you just please yourself, but you are not building anything. 
if you want to build a family, if you want to have a marriage, you would be looking for someone that is faithful. And likewise, God wants you to be faithful. If you want to enter into God's chamber, you need to be faithful. And that is also a reminder for all my brothers, in the Protestants, that like to take the, the Sola Scriptura and think that that's fine. Because the Holy Bible did not, and this is the New Testament, the Holy Bible or the New Testament did not come about and by God directly. There were 12 people that Jesus Christ revealed as God, called to be his apostles, to be his disciples. And on those 12 and their successors, the Bible was compiled. It is they that said which are the books that should be there. Now, if you want to take away or add, if you want to twist, then you are not faithful anymore. And you are creating your own version, but you are not faithful. And thus, you will not enter into heaven. For blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.